I know that you guys froth a good lighting behind the scenes video and that's exactly what you're gonna get today. Now, this video is sponsored by Godox. This is very exciting for me because I've always wanted to partner with them. I use their products on every single photo shoot that I do. So for this behind the scenes tutorial, we are using the Godox AD200 Pro Lights today. Now, I personally don't use these in my photo shoots. I use the AD600 Pro Lights. So it's been a really cool experience to use a different model of light for these photos today. And these are the photos that I'm going to be walking you behind the scenes on. I really love how these photos have turned out. I'm gonna show you the lighting. I'm gonna show you the setup. Now, along with these lights, there's another very interesting piece of gear that I have used to make these photos come to life. And I'm gonna show you what that is very soon. Now, real quick, before we get stuck into the tutorial, if you are someone who wants to become a product photographer, you wanna do this full time, you wanna make money from it, you wanna work with your favorite brands, you're going to need three sets of skills, photography, business, and mindset. These three elements work together to create success in this industry. Because you could have really good photography skills, but if you don't know how to price your work, you don't know how to draw up a contract, you don't know how to sell and market a business online, that's a big one, it's going to be very difficult to actually build a business. And then you have the mindset stuff, the inner work, because I know there's fear, self-doubt, imposter syndrome, am I good enough, can I actually do this? All these thoughts stop us from showing up and actually doing this thing. And so this is exactly why I created my signature course, Become a Brand Photographer, because it meshes these three components together to help you create success. And no other course does this. So I will leave the link to that course in the description box below. If you have questions, if you wanna see if it's the right fit for you, send me an email, send me a DM on Instagram. I'm always happy to chat and I will always tell you my honest opinion as to whether or not I think you're gonna benefit from the course. Okay, now that I've told you about that, let's go behind the scenes. Now, one of the benefits of the AD200 Pro is literally how small it is. Like if you have a big enough pocket, you can fit it in your pocket. It's very lightweight and it's also powerful. And to set it up, it's super duper easy. You've just got to pop this little attachment on so you can whack it onto your stand. And now I'm going to show you how to connect it to your camera. Now, in order to use your strobe light, you're going to need a trigger. So this is the Godox X Pro 2C. So C is for Canon. If you have a Sony, obviously you would get a trigger for Sony. And we're just going to pop that onto our camera lock it in and switch it on. So the first thing we need to do is switch on our strobe light, that little switch on the left. And now we have it turned on. So what do you wanna make sure is that your channel matches the channel on your trigger. That's how you sync it. And it should just sync automatically. So we are currently on channel 21 and we're on A. So let's go back to our trigger. So as you can see, we're on channel 21 a is selected, so that is going to sync with my AD200 Pro light. And what I can do is now add another light on the B channel and connect that up. For this scene, we are doing a fun ingredient water shot. So I have a very large acrylic tray. You're gonna need one that's watertight so that it doesn't leak. I've got some cordial. I'll probably need to desaturate the color because it's very intense. Um, we have our Glow Recipe Watermelon Pink Juice Moisturizer. Apparently it's good. And obviously watermelon because that is the star ingredient of the product. So when you are styling and you're creating scenes, you want to tell a story. You really want to move from that average boring photo to something that tells a story about the product that you're shooting. So I have my base scene here. I'm going to add a little bit more watermelon because I just think it needs a bit more framing around the product. And then we're going to test out our lighting and see, see what's happening. So for our lighting, I'm experimenting with two lights today. We have a key light on the left, which is a Godox AD200 Pro. And then because I'm using a glass surface, and an acrylic tray, I don't have a vinyl background below it. I'm going to illuminate the shot from beneath. So I have a little mini stand with another 8200 Pro, and this is going to illuminate the shot from underneath, giving it that glow, because glow recipe, right? Makes sense. So I'm just putting that 
right at the back. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this first shot and see what it's looking like. Now remember, I haven't added any water in yet. We're just testing our lighting. Okay, I'm happy with this image, but I kind of think that I could elevate the lighting just a little bit more. So the question is, how are we going to elevate this lighting look? I have something that's really fun and it's, it might look a little strange, but bear with me here. I'm gonna show you the difference that this attachment is going to make to the photo. Enter the Godox 8200 stick light flash head. I know it kind of looks like a lightsaber for all my Star Wars fans, but this thing is pretty cool. And I'm gonna show you the effect that this kind of attachment has on this scene. So this is the flash head. It's kind of like a little wand. It's got a nice little grip here. And all this does is attach to the end of your AD200 Pro light. So you just remove your old attachment and whack this on and it comes with this cord. So one of the key benefits of the stick flash is that it has a 360 degree spread of light. So you're gonna get a really beautiful wraparound of light onto your scene without the use of like a softbox or diffusion paper. So what the stick flash is gonna do is diffuse the light more onto my scene and soften the shadows. So in this photo here, you can see there are hard shadows. It's hard light, sunny light, which I love the look, but you know what? I'm actually really loving the soft diffused light look right now. I think it looks really beautiful and obviously it depends on the product, but we're gonna give this a go and I'm excited to use this. Okay, so I've got my stick flash. I'm just gonna hold it <laughs> and I'm going to basically just hold it above my scene here. I'm gonna take that shot. Now I'm just gonna make sure it doesn't reflect too much on the label. And I might just increase my aperture. Now you can play around as well with where you wanna put it. It does have a little like screw bit in the end. So you'd be able to put this onto a tripod, for example, or a stand with an attachment. But I'm just gonna hold it up like this. So as you can see on this photo here, this is with the stick flash and it's diffused the light. It's softened those shadows and I really love this look. So now that we have dialed in our lighting, I'm ready to add my pink water to make it look like pink juice. So we've got our pink juice in, it's looking so good. I have moved the AD200 Pro right below my scene. Originally I had it more out to the side, but I was like, you know what? I really want that glow right directly behind the product. And this is the benefit of using a glass surface so that you can put your acrylic tray on top and have it lit from below. So now I'm gonna take my shot, make sure I'm happy with how this is looking. And then I'm going to add two more elements to this scene. So for my next element, I'm going to be spraying some water droplets onto the product. This is a mixture of glycerin and water. And then for my final element, I'm going to be adding some movement into the water. Now, as I add elements, I'm taking a shot. So this is especially handy when you're sifting through your images. You might feel like, oh, I like it without the glycerin or I like it without movement in the water. This way you have options when you go to edit your final photo. Now, because I am a one woman show today, I don't have an assistant. I'm gonna pop my camera on a 10 second timer so it can take the photo while I create movement with a hairdryer and hold the flash stick. We're very resourceful. Okay, so I thought I was done, but I'm not done. There's one more element that I wanna to add to this photo to just give it a little bit more oomph and visual interest. And that is a gel. So we are gonna add this to the light that is below our scene because it's gonna glow pink from below and add a little bit more vibrancy and color to the water. So let's do that. So for this scene here, it's same lighting, same setup, just different styling and product. So I have a white foam board on the right because it's gonna bounce light back onto the right side of my scene. We have a backlight and there's a yellow gel on that. And then we have our stick flash. So I'm controlling my camera from my iPad using the Canon Camera Connect app. Um, that way I can take the photo right from here and I can see it on my iPad. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
And I'm just gonna play around with where I wanna put the stick flash to see where is gonna get that best light. So when you're shooting with this, what I actually love is you can experiment with like where you want your light to be and it's gonna give you different effects. It's gonna make it a little bit more moody. It's gonna make it more bright, depending on where you put it. Uh, you could take multiple photos with the stick in different spots and then composite those photos into Photoshop to create your final image. Now, if you do wanna control the light of the stick flash even more, you can use the barn doors. Now, I haven't opted to use these today because I'm actually really happy with the 360 spread of light that the stick flash gives. But these are here if you wanna control your light a little bit more. So what are my final thoughts on the stick flash? I actually really love it. I think it's a very cool piece of gear and I think it gives you a lot of control over your light as well. And the way that it wraps around your subject and your scene to give it that 360 spread of light. And as you can see by the final photos, I really do think that this has elevated the look of the lighting to make the photos look more premium in my personal opinion. So I hope you have found this tutorial helpful. You've been inspired. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Let's have a chat. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.